Now on any question on momentum, I'd want to make sure I drew a diagram. So we have our two particles then, A and B, and particle A has a mass of 0.3 kilograms, so I'd mark that inside, and particle B has a mass of m kilograms, so I'd mark that inside. We're told that before the collision they're moving towards one another with uh, A having a speed of 8 meters per second, so I'd mark an arrow there, and B has a speed towards A of 4 meters per second. And this was before the impact, so I'd mark that in as before. And then after impact, just mark that in as after, they're moving in opposite directions with a speed of 2 meters per second. So marking that in, A is going that way at 2 meters per second, and B is moving in that direction at 2 meters per second. Now, in part A, we're asked to find the impulse then on A due to the collision. Whenever I do impulse, okay, I always draw an arrow and I make it a kind of open arrow, something like this, and I'll label that I. So A is going to receive an impulse in this direction when it collides with B. In fact, B will also receive an impulse in the set in exactly the same size, I should say, but in the opposite direction. So I could mark that in like so if I wanted to. Okay, we've got that then in this question. Now, what is impulse? Well, you should know, let's just put it over here, that impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So I just put that there as change in momentum. We'll just say MOM because I haven't got much room there. Change in momentum. What is change in momentum? Well, momentum anyway is mass times velocity. So the change is the mass times the final velocity, V, minus the mass times the initial velocity, U. Now, because we're dealing with vector quantities, one of the common mistakes that people make in questions like this is that they do not set up a plus direction. Technically, it doesn't matter which way you set the plus direction, but I'm going to set the plus direction when we consider A for the impulse towards the left, okay? Because that's the direction that I is acting. So for A, we have that the impulse, okay, I'm going to define it as the letter I, equals the change in momentum. So according to the formula, it's the mass, which is 0.3 multiplied by the velocity. The velocity, remember, is a vector quantity and it, the final velocity is 2 meters per second in the plus direction. So that would be 0.3 times 2. Then we have minus the mass, which is 0.3 multiplied by u, the initial velocity. And the initial velocity, when we look at a, was 8. But notice that it's to the right, it's in the negative sense. So it's very important to make sure you put minus 8 there. Okay, so easy to trip up on this bit. Alright, all we need to do then is just work that out and so if you do that sum you'll find that you get 3 and the units for impulse are Newton seconds. Okay, NS. Alright, well that's part A done. Now in part B, we're asked to calculate the mass of B, the value m. And the way we can do that is by knowing that the impulses are exactly the same, okay, in magnitude. So this impulse on B will be of magnitude 3, but obviously acting towards the right. I could use this equation again to find out the mass. So if I was to consider B, let's just put that in here, consider, let's say, the impulse on B. All right, that would guide the reader to what we're doing. We would see that I, and we need a plus direction, by the way, so before we start, let's take the plus direction as positive to the right, because that's the direction that I is 
in. Okay, so we'll have that as the plus direction. Again, I don't need to have plus to the right. I can have it to the left, but whatever we do, make sure you stick to the correct sign when you're dealing with vector quantities. Okay, taking plus to the right then, we have I equals, okay, the mass times the final velocity. So we have the mass, which is M equals, sorry, times the final velocity, which is 2, minus the mass m multiplied by u, the initial velocity. And notice now that the 4 meters per second is to the left. That is in the negative sense. So we've got minus 4. Well, we know that i was the 3 here. So we've got 3 equals 2m plus another 4m, so that's 6m, and dividing both sides by 6 means that m is 3 sixths or a half, a half of a kilogram, or 0.5 kilograms. Okay, so that is a way that we could find the mass m. Now there was another way, and that is that we could have used the conservation of momentum. And the, conserva sorry, the conservation of momentum is the momentum before impact equals the momentum after impact. So we could have done, and we need to plus direction again through this. So if I take plus, say, to the right, we could have said that the momentum before would have been the mass here of A times the velocity. So that would be 0 0.3 times 8, 0 0.3 times the 8. Then plus the momentum, the initial momentum of B, which would have been the mass M times the velocity. But you've got to be very careful here because 4 acts towards the left and we've got to the right as positive. So that would be minus 4. So that's the initial momentum before impact equals the momentum after impact. So it would have 0 0.3 times negative 2 because that is the velocity is acting towards the left for A. So that's 0 0.3 multiplied by negative 2 plus the momentum of B which would be the mass times the 2, M times 2. Alright, so that's the conservation of momentum equation. Maybe I should say that up here by the conservation of momentum. So we just say cons of momentum. Okay. If we work this out then, we've got 0.3 times 8, so that is 2.4. We've got minus 4m here, and we've got minus, sorry, equals minus 0 0.6 for this one, and 2m over here. Adding 4m to both sides and adding 0 0.6 to both sides gives 3 on this side, equals 6m on the other side and you can see we're back to the same equation and dividing by 6 we end up with m equaling 3 sixths or half a kilogram again. So either way using impulse on B or by the conservation of momentum we get the final result that the mass is half a kilogram. And that brings us to the end then of this question.